begin our discussion on module 6 that is going to deal with enzymes and enzyme mechanisms. In the first of this series or this module in le this lecture, we will be talking about the classification of enzymes. Before we go into the classification of enzymes, we need to know the practical importance of enzymes. In our discussion on protein ligand interactions, we referred to the enzyme substrate complex many times in a subset of what we would call protein ligand interactions. But they are very important in the processes that go on in biochemical systems in all living organisms. Be it catalysis, we have the major role of enzymes is catalysis, and we will see a set of reactions based on the specific enzymes. If we look at the functions of proteins in general, they have structural functions, functions related to motion, to defense, to storage, and signaling. But we also have functions related to catalysis that are brought about by enzymes. These enzymes are remarkable and very specialized proteins that are central to every biochemical process. The catalytic power that these enzymes possess is very high and they have the ability to catalyze several hundreds and thousands of reactions where they degrade the nutrient molecules, they conserve, they transform chemical energy and their specificity and rate of activity is what we are going to see in the specific enzyme mechanisms and in the overall aspect of enzyme kinetics as to how it works to achieve the specificity and its very high efficiency. It can make biological macromolecules from simple precursors and have a high degree of specificity for their substrates. The immense practical importance of enzymes can be understood in certain diseases, particularly inheritable genetic diseases. It may so happen that there is a deficiency or even a total absence of one or more enzymes. For example, in Tay-Sachs disease, there is no production of a specific enzyme, hexosaminidase D, A. Other disease conditions are caused by excessive activity of an enzyme or the absence of an enzyme or a reduction in activity of the enzyme. So these drugs that we know that will treat disease, they also act through interactions with enzymes. The measurements of the activities of enzymes in blood plasma or any tissue are important in the diagnosis of certain illness. And today they are very important practical tools in chemical engineering and food technology. Some enzymes do not require any additional chemical groups for their activity other than the sequence of amino acid residues present. Some other enzymes require an additional chemical component called a cofactor. This cofactor can be either inorganic in nature or organic in nature. For the inorganic type, we have the metal ions. And for the organic type, we have complex organic or even metal organic molecules that are called coenzymes. Some inorganic ions that can serve as cofactors for enzymes are copper in cytochrome oxidase, the iron in cytochrome oxidase, catalase peroxidase, and of course in hemoglobin as well, where that would be a transport protein. In the enzymes, we see it in this term, this type of enzyme. And another thing we need to notice is each of these enzymes has a name that's an ase, a catalase, a peroxidase, a kinase. In this case, we have nickel in urease molybdenum dinitrogenase. So when we look at the other molecules also, the metal ions present in these different types of enzymes, they have a specific role to play. In 
addition to the important role that they play in the coordination of specific amino acids with them in attracting the substrate to the specific active site is what we will investigate as we go through this module. These coenzymes, they act as the transient characters of specific functional groups. As a result, most are derived from vitamins, organic nutrients, and they are required in small amounts in the diet for efficient activity and for efficient functioning. A coenzyme or a metal ion that is very tightly or even sometimes covalently bound to the enzyme group is called a prosthetic group. A complete catalytically active enzyme together with its bound coenzyme and or metal ions is known as a holoenzyme. So the protein part of the holoenzyme is called the apoenzyme or the apoprotein. Some enzyme proteins are also modified covalently by phosphorylation, glycosylation and other processes where there would be some other molecule that is not an amino acid usually tagged onto the protein. Many of these alterations are involved in the regulation of activity enzyme activity and are thus essential for their activity. And some enzymes require both a coenzyme and metal enzymes for their activity. We will look at specific examples to see this. So if we look at our cofactor that is bound to our enzyme that we see is this is the major protein, the major construction of the protein. Here we have the active site or the catalytic site where we will have the enzymatic reaction take place, the catalytic reaction to take place. And for the activity, we need the cofactor in place. We need the coenzyme in place. And we have the apoenzyme. Together, this forms the holoenzyme. And for the enzymatic activity to occur, we need all these parts in place for the proper catalytic activity to occur for this enzyme. Some coenzymes that serve as transient carriers of specific atoms of functional groups are biocytin and it transfers carbon dioxide and the dietary precursor in mammals is biotin. Similarly, there are some other examples here. We have coenzyme A, where the chemical group transferred are the acyl groups, and the dietary precursor is pantothenic acid. Similarly, we can have coenzyme B12. We have hydrogen and alkyl hydrogen atoms or alkyl groups transferred in vitamin B12, which is the dietary precursor. So any reaction that would require the transfer of alkyl groups would need the coenzyme B12. And for the coenzyme B12 to be present, we have to have vitamin B12. FAD, where we have electron transfer, requires riboflavin or vitamin B2. Some other examples, NAD, where we have the transfer of a hydride ion, nicotinic acid in terms of niacin in dietary precursors. Pyridoxal phosphate, the transfer of amino groups in vitamin B6. Tetrahydrofolate, a carbon groups in folate. And thiamine P for the transfer of aldehydes in vitamin B1. If we look at the enzyme classification now, there, this assists us in understanding what group of enzymes it belongs to. As was mentioned in a couple of slides before, that the enzymes are generally named according to the reaction that they catalyze or by suffixing A's after the name of the substrate. The International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology developed a nomenclature for enzymes. So each enzyme is described by a sequence of four numbers preceded by EC that denotes the enzyme commission and the number of enzymes 
of the enzyme is called its EC number. So, when classified, each of these enzymes is assigned this EC number in the form of digits separated by periods, much like you would see an IP address. And the first number categorizes the enzyme based on its reaction. The first three numbers represent the class, the subclass, and the sub-subclass to which an enzyme belongs. And the fourth digit is a serial number that identifies that particular enzyme within the sub-subclass. So if we look at this classification, they are classified by the reactions that they catalyze. So if we look at an enzyme, there are six enzyme classes. We have the oxidoreductases, the transferases, the hydrolases, the lyases, the isomerases, and the ligases. So these enzymes are classified accordingly in these six groups of reactions that they catalyze. So if we look at oxidoreductases, the job of an oxidoreductase, this catalyst, catalyst is involved in adding or removing hydrogen atoms in a redox reaction. So here we see oxidized A and reduced B. And because of the transfer or the removal of the hydrogen atom in the redox reaction, we have a reversal in the final product where now A is the reduced one and B is the oxidized one. So different numbers of electrons can be transferred in this type of a reaction and oxygen atoms may also be transferred in the set that we would have an oxidation and the oxidizing agent would be reduced. If we have some examples, we have oxidases, glucose oxidase, NADPH oxidase, cytochrome P450 oxidase is a very important group of enzymes dehydrogenases and peroxidases. All of these fall into this category of classification 1 oxidoreductases. So if we look at an example like amino acid dehydrogenase, the overall reaction results in reductive amination in the forward direction where we have this alpha keto acid form an alpha amino acid. And the reverse reaction would therefore involve an oxidative deamination to form the keto acid from the amino acid. In the case of dehydrogenases, we are looking at transferase, transfer of the hydrogen. So we have the hydrogen transfer in dehydrogenases. In oxidases, again, we have a similar type of reaction each of them involving hydrogen or oxygen. In the second class where we have the transferases, there is a transfer of functional groups between donor and acceptor molecules. So here we see A, B, where B from A is transferred on to C. So the product is A plus B, C, where the functional group B has now been transferred to C. These are one of the two largest enzyme classes and form 30% of the types of enzymes. A very important transfer is the transfer of the phosphate group. The examples that we see are kinases, methyl transferases, transaminases. Kinases are specific transferases that transfer the phosphate group. We also have the other types of transferases where from the name we can understand what particular group is being transferred and what type of reaction might occur. So if we look at amino transferases, the overall reaction would involve an amino donor that is going to transfer the amine group and an amino acceptor that is going to accept the transferred amine group. So if we have a system where we have R1, R2 with the NH3 plus group here, and we have this where the oxygen atom is, there is an exchange of this where we have the amine donor and the amine acceptor, giving us the overall reaction in that involves amino transferase. 
In the third type of enzyme classification, we have hydrolases. In this case, there is water being added to the specific bond and there is a cleavage of the chemical bond resulting in AH and BOH. This uses water to break covalent bonds by specific nucleophilic substitution reactions. The examples that we have are esterases, particularly nucleases, phosphatases, and proteases involving serine protease and cysteine protease that are important reaction. This is a peptidase. Important reactions that involve the cleavage of a peptide bond, which we will see later when we do enzyme mechanisms. For example, if we look at a CC hydrolase, there is a specific reaction where we cleave the CC bond. So we have a cleavage in this particular reaction where we have the break here and this part remains as it is and this part has transferred here. So we have a CC bond cleavage. In the fourth type of enzyme classification, we have lyases. In this case, water, ammonia, or carbon dioxide is added to a double bond, or there is a removal of these small molecules to make a double bond. So the reaction sometimes involves the formation of a double bond or a ring in the structure. The examples of such Lyases are pyruvate decarboxylase, where we have the pyruvate molecule lose the carbon dioxide, forming acetaldehyde. So the transfer or the loss of a small molecule such as ammonia or carbon dioxide would result in a pyruvate decarboxylase, in this case, in a specific type of lyase reaction. In the fifth type of enzyme classification, we are looking at isomerases. As the name implies, this is the transformation of one isomer to another isomer by intramolecular rearrangement of bonds. So we have A and we have the isomer of A. Now, this is sometimes important in enzyme reactions because it allows the interconversion between isomers that take place through geometric or structural changes. The specific examples of these types of enzymes are racemases or epimerases, as the name implies. We can go from one racemic structure to another using a racemase enzyme or from one epimer to another epimer in another isomerization reaction. One example is alanine racemase. In cis trans isomerases, we go from a cis configuration to a trans configuration in these types of isomer reactions. In addition, we can have intramolecular oxidoreductases where we have a ribose 5-phosphate isomerase or we can have specific mutases where an intramolecular transferase will take place. In these cases, there is the transfer of a specific group from one position to the other in the same molecule that indicates that it is an isomer of that, but there is a transfer of a moiety from one atom to another atom. Another example that we can look at is malleate isomerase. In this case, we are looking at a cis trans isomerase. Malic acid and fumaric acid are cis trans isomers. So when we have the malleate in this case, which is the cis isomer, the involvement of the enzyme malleate isomerase is going to be involved in a reaction that would form the isomer of malleate, which is fumarate.
where we would have the trans configuration. This is an important reaction in one of the oxidative reactions that are present in our body. In this type of enzyme classification in ligases, we have the catalysis where there is the formation of a bond between two chemical groups with the use of energy from ATP. In this case, what happens is we have A, we have B, and these two are going to be connected by a bond formation in a ligation reaction that is going to be due to the presence of the enzyme like some ligase that will result in the connection of A and B in a covalent bond formation, but with the use of energy from the cleavage of the high energy phosphate bond of ATP. These are very important reactions because we are forming new types of compounds. For example, we can form carbon oxygen bonds, forming carbon sulfur bonds. In this case, the enzyme that is used to form the carbon oxygen bond would be amino acid tRNA ligases. Forming carbon sulfur bonds are acetate coenzyme A ligases. In a specific example of glutamine synthetase, the synthetase means that they, it is being formed. In this case, what we see is we have L-glutamate that is going to form L-glutamine. Glutamine synthetase, as the name implies, the synthesis of glutamine. Now, this particular formation involves the formation of the amide form of glutamic acid. This we know is the amino acid glutamic acid, the acidic amino acid. It is going to be ligased with NH4+, and we need energy for the reaction. This energy comes from the cleavage of ATP to ADP plus PI, where, which will involve the ligase or the linking of the amine group or formation of the amide of glutamate, that is glutamine. In the sixth enzyme classification of ligases, again, we are looking at this specific bond as we spoke about. These are the references for this particular lecture. Thank you.